Good morning, this is Jack from the Art Shop on it, and this is the pre-market recording for Friday the 18th of June. Um, we've got a modest disclaimer. Um, we do this for educational purposes only. We have to share our technical analysis with you. We hope you can take some of what we're doing and learn from it, transfer it to your own charts. And I'm here to issue trading signals. Now, I actually arrived here at quarter past and wondered why no one was here. And of course, the room, but I hadn't posted the link. Sorry about that. So, um, so we had to have five minutes delay while the link was going through. Let's have a look at indices. Now, um, I was wondering about this rising support trend line here, and we've broken it. Um, we are getting down into the sort of area I was talking about yesterday, where which is going to be basically 4165, 4170. And that's is the main rising support trend line on SPX. That is the main support here. Um, we are forming what could be a flag here, but I would also note that if we get down to the 4160 area, we will be hitting a potential head and shoulder decline. Now, this is earlier than I was expecting, and Fridays don't tend to be that bearish, and particularly OPEX Fridays don't tend to be that bearish, um, but obviously we've um, seen some damage done overnight, and we are gapping through. Having held at the close the last two, um, last two days, we've held the um, daily middle band, we've gapped down below it this morning. So it's going to be very interesting to see whether we close back over 4200 today, because that in effect is where the daily middle band is at the moment. Um, so we will see. We were holding as resistance, obviously, we confirmed it yesterday. I was talking about that in the morning, and we held it like a gem. That was, in effect, also the 50 hour moving average, which is um, good short term um, trend resistance or support um, when it is reached. All right, NQ. Um, we've got a weak 60 minute sell signal fix. Now, this is the original channel I was talking about two days ago, talking about a decline into um, the channel support. Now, obviously that broke and I've drawn in a potential larger wedge here. It's really not a bad one. So I drew this in last night and we'd reached the wedge resistance last night. And obviously we'd made the, I was I did the post yesterday talking about the, um, the NDX setup and this really completes it and gives us daily negative divergence on the RSI 5. Um, we've also got this nice looking wedge here. We were hitting resistance. We overthrew it there and then we came back and we back tested it. This is some Thing you often see um, and is something I'm very much wondering about here. I think this looks like a topping pattern. The next obvious target would be um, the rising support in the 1930-930 um, area and a break below that would open up the, um, the potential um, double top support which could take us down into the monthly pivot area on a breakdown. Um, so watching that with great interest. RTY um, is going lower. Um, we've made the double top target, which I have to say I wasn't expecting when it initially broke down, um, but it's made the double top target. That's very nice. Potential level bottom here, obviously. No current positive diversions. YM. We've got a 60 minute buy signal fixed here, but it's really just fallen off cliff since then. We may lose that signal this morning, even though it's not an easy low signal to lose because the first low is actually below 20. Watching to see what happens here. Um, we've only got that positive divergence, and as I said, we may lose it. Um, so we will see. We are getting down towards a retest of this low here in the 33100 area. Um, on DAX and the STX, um, these have been stronger than the others, um, but we've got a double top on here on DAX, which could be reached, and I've got double top support in the 15500 550 area, and I've got a wedge here on the STX. Now, this may have broken down and we're topping out, or we may go back and hit, hit wedge resistance, in which case I redraw this trend line and expand it. Um, so waiting to see what happens there. Let's have a look at the RTH charts. Now, I've got a lot of RTH charts today, so I just wanted to cover a few things, and um, so we might overrun a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'll cover equities to start off with, and just talk about the day's outlook, and then we'll have a look at um, other instruments and the various other charts I want to show. All right, SPX. Um, SPX not reached an obvious ball level. Obviously, we've got the head and shoulder neckline that I was talking about. Um, we've um, had a decent retracement so far, but the main the main thing I'm looking at here is obviously the main rising wedge support here. We got pretty close to this morning um it's not that far away um from this black line here which is the 200 um hour moving average 200s 50s 20s um they tend to be important on every time frame um and actually the 200 is probably the time um, moving average i use most on the one minute chart um for intraday stuff so i mean this um so it's a significant level and watching that the 50 was resistance yesterday um so we'll see if we get a test of that support today and if so whether it holds if it doesn't it should put us in a topping process the main topping pattern on ndx i was talking about this yesterday on um on my post 
this is the daily negative divergence we got with this high retest. We've got a pretty decent looking wedge here. It's really not bad. Um, I'm thinking this may well break down today, and so we will see. Um, IWM, um, we had this um, triangle-like setup. This actually looks like unfinished business above, which is a bit concerning. So I didn't, um, if we're looking at a turn, I don't like leaving unfinished business above. Um, so we didn't quite retest this high. We got pretty damn close. Maybe that was close enough. Um, but I am wondering whether we may be coming back in the next um, weeks to come back and make this to make this full target, which would usually be made. Um, so we will see. Okay, great. In terms of the outlook today, um, it's mainly about that support. I've got that on LES in the 416570 area. Um, and I'm looking for an AM low, and we'll see whether that support is broken. If it is broken with any conviction at all, um, then we may well make it down into the um, head and shoulder neckline in the 4160 area, in which case we may well see a right, right shoulder bounce there. I wouldn't be expecting to see a big decline today because it is Friday, it's OPEX Friday. Um, if we get down to 4160 area, I'd be expecting it to hold. Um, so we will see how that goes. All right, moving on. Um, let's have a look at DX. Now, DX, nice rally here. Now, I was I was just saying in the um, before the webinar started, there was an argument um, for um, DX possibly getting back up to 94. Obviously, we're only at 92 at the moment. Uh, we've had negative divergence yesterday. We've got a bit higher. The sell signal has fixed. The buy signals are fixed on the corresponding um, US dollar in, um, um, pairs. And we could well see a reversal here, although really there is not much sign of it so far. We will see. Um, but we've got the sell signal. Um, but that might just be a pullback as we head back to 94. Why am I thinking 94? Well, I was showing the potential flag here. <coughs> I'm just saying this hasn't been this wasn't a huge rally for the size of this move um we could be forming a flag i've got an attractive target in the 94 area um and another one in just below 95 um we could be forming a flag a b c notes the higher low here uh, we could need a higher high or we could be forming a triangle in which case um, we could head back into about the 93.2 area either way um there's definitely scope for going higher um, so I'm not thinking this is necessarily turning down hard. CB. CB went back and did the retest. Um, and we haven't got any negative diversions, but obviously we've got a nice looking potential on the top here. I was looking for a reversal pattern and potentially we've got it. But, and there is a but, um, looking at the TNX chart here, um, wait a second. Um, TNX has not yet retested the low. Um, that's the level TNX, and we haven't made it yet. Um, so I'm wondering whether we could continue a little higher on ZB to go and retest that low. I mean, as it is, we've made the daily sell signal targets on TLT. I've actually got a weak sell signal brewing. These do still look like flags, very much so. Um, so, and I'm expecting ZB to turn down, but obviously it hasn't turned down yet. Um, okay, um, CL. Now we've got a hu huge roll weekend this weekend, um, and um, I'm rolling CL, NG, um, none of the metals yet. I think the next week I'm rolling DAX, um, DAX, ESTX. I'm also rolling KC, SB, CC, ZW, MCC, ZF, and CT. Um, there are 11 instruments rolling tomorrow. Um, of which the only one I've actually rolled today is Coco, um, because of, um, because the um, volume on the previous contract has shrunk to almost nothing already. So CL and August, um, CL and NG, I haven't rolled them into August um, yet, but I'm rolling them into the weekend. NG might be a couple of days early, but it's close. Um, CL then, um, rising wedge has broken down. Um, wondering about a high retest kind of looks like a flag. NG has broken the rising sport again kind of looks like a flag and i'm wondering about a high retest um both of these well cl particularly if the dollar is going to be on a um, on a big rally is liable to be weak and we are expecting to see a retracement soon although i'm still wondering about my target which is pretty close in the 76.9 area gc um gc has fallen very hard with the dollar rally um, now, this is something I was um, talking about, to, um, someone asked me about yesterday and said, what would turn my outlook bearish on gold? And it would take an awful lot more than this. But um, because at the moment we've got this big flag, it's broken up, and at the moment we've gone beyond the back test. If we go lower, it's possible we're going to come back and retest this low to make the second low of a double bottom. But it's a nice flag. Um, it's broken up and we should have a retest of the high. The only reason we'd make a lower low is either that we were bottering out for this pattern or it was ABC. 
Uh, there's no particular reason to expect it to go lower, but obviously there is always scope. Um, and this would be a sudden and unexpected retest, but we get sudden and unexpected retest. Um, one very good example of that, although we were wondering about it for a while before it happened, was when we had this huge retest um, here on US dollar. That was out of the blue and, frankly, momentary. Um, but we've been wondering about it for a while here and very down slightly and, you know, market turns and we are off like a rocket and we make it, get, um, make a marginal new high and come back. I'm always very reluctant to write off the prospects for a retest um, of a low or high. Um, you get them a lot. Some of them, um, it doesn't look as though you're going to get them and you get them anyway. Um, SI. SI has gone lower. Um, no current positive divergence. Um, Obviously, we killed the flag, and we've also reached a potential head and shoulder neck point, um, which I am... Sorry, someone's calling me on Skype. Okay, um, so we've got um, potential to go lower here. If this is a head and shoulder for me, I'd be looking for a high, which would be in about the 26.85 area. We could see that. Um, waiting to see. HG has gone a bit lower. We've, we're on a 60 minute bicycle, not really delivered much so far, but this does look like bottoming action. If the bulls have got anything, then we need to see a break over the four, um, this declining resistance in the 4.26 stroke 7 area. Um, UUSD, um, 60 minute bicycle is fixed. Um, no sign of that delivering anything so far, but it is divergence as we've got a sell signal on dollar um, and we've got the buy signal on euro and GBP. Um, we've got a sell signal on USD, oh, no, sorry, we don't have one on USD JPY. We've got a buy signal, sorry, sell signal on USD CAD, um, which is the other one which um, goes directly with DX. So we haven't got one on USD JPY, but that's um, on the corresponding ones. We've got back up here, back up here, back up here. Um, Australian dollar, uh, we've got a six minute buy signal fixed, and NZUSD, um, we've got a possible six minute buy signal break. That's a lot of divergence. Now, one thing I mentioned yesterday um, was that on NZ, we have this very nice wedge here, and it may have broken down. Um, and that rig down would have a target. I would actually be in about, I'm not quite sure where it is right now, but I think it's about the 69, 68, 75 area. Um, so we will see how that goes. All right, now um, I'm going to roll over into the daily charts for the rest of the commodities. And actually, practically all of these are rolling. Um, so these are the rolled charts. Um, so let's have a look at those. Um, CL and NQ, obviously. Let's have a look. And um, GC, I just wanted to um, show you on the daily chart here. Um, the weak RSI 14 cell signal is made target. No current positive diversions. Um, KC. Um, RSI 14 sell signal is fixed. I've got a possible RSI 5 buy signal brewing. Um, we are getting down to a zone where we could see a bounce. I've got a couple of possible head shoulder necklines here. Uh, we've got a fair amount of daily sell signal left, um, but the RSI 5 one's a better at making target, and that one has already made target. Um, so wondering about a possible rally at least. SB, we've got a nice looking head and shoulders here. Now this is something, it looks a little different on this rolled chart, which is October, um, but this is the head and shoulders I was talking about as a possibility, and we've broken down for it. Now unless we're going to reject back higher, that's got a target in the 1535 area, and we may well make it. Um, CC, um, no current divergence, um, not a bad looking little falling wedge here, um, which is pretty close to support. Wondering if that's going to turn back up into wedge resistance. On wheat, um, RSI 14 sell signal has reached the possible near miss target again. We're retesting this low. This could be the second low of a double bottom. If it isn't, um, then um, the obvious next target would be this rising support currently in the 621 area. Um, on corn, an RSI 14 sell signal is fixed. Um, um, a while back and hasn't reached the possible near miss target yet, it may be about to. We could be forming a flag or a triangle here, but in that case, we could go as low as 480. Um, in terms of soy, uh, we've got a nice looking double top here, and that's broken down. I've got alternate targets in the 1175 to 1200 area, um, and I'm not seeing any particular reason to think those aren't going to be made. Um, or at least one of them isn't going to be made. And I would note that I've got a big level down here in about the 1180 area. Um, so waiting to see if that delivers. Um, chances are it looks as though it is going to deliver. Um, so we will see how that goes. And cotton. Um, cotton, no current diversions. It's broken the short-term rising support. Um, this would normally deliver um, at least some more downside and probably will do here as well. Okay, um, and what other things have we left out? Like life cattle, like lumber, 
Lumber has gone a bit lower. I've got positive divergence on the 60 minute now. That may deliver something. This is now down. Um, well, it's down a lot. Um, this is uh, this is dropped two. Th um, sorry, dropped a, um, a third since um, since the high. No, 40 percent actually. Wow, that's very impressive. Um, but I mean, this move wasn't going to last forever, and was liable to be followed by a pretty steep connection. And I think it's we're getting to the stage where I might start leaning bullish on number again soon. Um, live cattle, um, we've seen a bit of a retracement, um, steep, um, harsh move up, steep retracement, um, holding the rising support at the moment, might need a touch of that um, in the 120.8 area, um, but still leaning towards the upside, no current negative divergence. Lean hogs, um, lean hogs, um, 60 minute sell signal reach target, um, no current positive divergence, wondering about a low here, also looking at the potential um, um, neckline um, in the 104 area. Okay, um, what questions have we got today, guys? Right, ideally, um, we would see an AM low today. Um, we would make it either in about the um, 4165 um, to 70 area or slightly below in about the 4155 to 62 area. Um, so we've got a big support zone there. Chances are, I think, we would find support at one or the other. Mainly because it is Friday. It is Friday, it is Apex Friday. We don't tend to have really big moves on Friday. Now, maybe it'll just break support and go straight through it, but I mean, the smart money wouldn't be on that. Um, chances are we're going to find support at one of those lows and we'll probably hold it. We may well close below 4200. I'll be watching that because that is the daily middle band. Um, and that is the important resistance today. I've got that in about 4200 to 4205 area, and if we break up through that and we close above that, then that will be a failed break below the middle band. That could see a reaction next week, although, as I said, and I've talked about on the post, the um, the uh, the outlook for next week historically is pretty bearish, and what we're looking at here is the start of a move that could look pretty bearish. So one way or another, um, we need to be aware of the very large downside potential from here. Um, so we will see. All right, guys. Anyway, have a nice weekend. Um, if we see get, get anything nice or low, I will call it, and uh, we will see. All right. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.